You know, we talk about crossfire whenever we talk about church security. Someone's always bringing it up. It is important, you know, but it's almost like the first buzzword everyone starts thinking about when they get interested in being on the armed portion of the security team. It seems like at each of my live seminars on church security over the years, there's someone raising their hand and wants to talk about Crossfire. I'm certainly all about talking about it, as you're gonna see, and I'm gonna to talk to you about what my perspectives are. And I have a video to share with you, and, and, and I'm gonna play it in just a minute, and it's only, it's a quick five minutes, and I hope you'll watch the entire five minutes. It's important to see the whole thing. The video talks all about Crossfire, and it's a special training segment I created on the topic for some of our online training. But I have to say, I do not think it's as big of an issue as we make it out to be as far as the likelihood of it happening. It's important to talk about. Do we need to talk about it? Again, do we need to examine our tactics based on the possibility? Absolutely. But I think it is something to talk about, something to train about, once a year for a few minutes and then move on to more likely issue. So let's take a look at the video from one of our online courses and then I would like to have further discussion with you once the video is completed. It's a quick video, take a look. So let's talk about avoiding crossfire situations. Now it's a topic that uh, comes up all the time when I'm out doing audits with ministries, uh, when I am doing church security training and I get emails about it. It's a big concern of ours. And I do understand it. We want to try to avoid that situation. I think there's a lot of other things for us to plan for and practice for, but this certainly could be one of those things that uh, we talk about. So, you know, can we avoid it completely? Sometimes under the pressure, it happens, but we can maybe prepare ahead of time, plan and talk about it a little bit ahead of time and try to prepare to avoid it. But even police sometimes uh, in the heat of the battle, in the heat of the moment, end up shooting each other sometimes. It just happens when you have a crisis situation sometimes. But we want to talk about how we can try to avoid that situation. You know, one of the things that I certainly suggest is we talk about it. You know, every so often talk about it with the team in our trainings. You know, talk about where we're going to be, how we shoot, and remember that know your target and beyond concept. Be able to look in a moment's notice and see what's behind that target and know those kind of things. You know, walk through the auditorium and talk about what your plans are. Take that time, like I'm mentioning, an off time, nobody's around, nobody's even got a chance of coming in. We don't wanna do this 10 minutes before a Sunday morning service when people are gonna start coming in and now we're talking about shooting and active shooters and stuff. But you know, on Tuesday evening we could meet or Tuesday afternoon or come in extra, extra early. Maybe we keep the doors locked while we run through this scenario. And then we open up, put signs up whenever we got even plastic guns out, in my opinion. So uh, so that people know when they should they come in, we're doing some kind of training here. But walk through the auditorium and talk about what are those different scenarios and then do scenario training with your plastic firearms. In my opinion, use plastic firearms, do some training where we're walking through the auditorium talking about crossfire and we're talking about where people are seated and and how we would engage somebody if they were right up front and stood up and began to be violent or they come in the back door. Talk about those different scenarios so that everybody's getting an idea. If we avoid the topic, that's bad. I mean, we need to be discussing it. We don't have to have all the knowledge, but the thing is, is let's walk through these things. Let's talk through them. And that is gold for our mind. Uh, doing something proactive about it and talking about it walking through it once in a while is a great idea. This might be a once a year topic, you know, and, and we come in extra, extra early and have a discussion or come in on a special day and we actually walk through this discussion. Uh, you know, and we might even be able to do it with maps in a side room if we wanna do it right before a service. But, uh, uh, you know, pick once a year at least to talk about this crossfire topic if you have armed security folks, just as a refresher, what would we do? Where should we be seated? Uh, those kinds of things. You know, when I look at this uh, situation here where, you know, typically if we're going to look at what are the possible scenarios, okay, let's use the real world for possible scenarios. And that is oftentimes violent folks just come in the back door and they start their violence at the back door or what we might call the front door in the back of your auditorium. And so oftentimes as they enter, they begin their violence. So we would talk about it, you know, in this 
situation, we have our two security persons. They could be ushers, whatever. I have them identified as with an S. But, you know, that's a bad situation. You know, they're going to, they have the potential to be shooting at each other. So we need to be talking about that stuff. And maybe we change their placement. The real world scenario is your shooter, there's a good chance they might just come right through that door into your auditorium. So what are you going to do in that situation? Where should we place people based on that possible scenario? The other possible scenario is, you know, here at the front the front of the auditorium, all of a sudden somebody stands up and becomes violent. Uh, so that's another real scenario that uh, we can look at. And where are you going to place your security? You know, here in this scenario, they're again crossed from each other. Maybe not the best scenario. So we want to talk about that. Where, what could we do to improve that situation? You know, and here's what I begin to look at. You know, we refine our situation here and this begins to look pretty good to me. We have, in, in fact, in our scenario, we have two doors. So, and then we have the back of the room and we have the front of the room where our pastor or priest is uh, speaking from. So I kind of like this scenario. We've got security, somebody with a firearm, if we have that resource. If you only have one person with a firearm, then you don't have this issue quite as much uh, other than maybe concealed carry folks uh, in the audience. But otherwise, if we're planning for it and we have a couple of armed folks on each uh, 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 ministry time, then here's a great scenario. Put one in the front, put one in the back. That person in the front's up, uh, in this case, near the door in the front. They're also near the stage and they're near the front if something should go wrong. The person in the back is where typically we're going to see firearms or violent people come from is through that door in the back or, or the front of the ministry. So, so uh, you know, these are scenarios, these are real scenarios. And this is the kind of stuff we should be walking through, talking with our teams and having that discussion. And what are the possibilities from those positions? Where might they be shooting? How uh, far might they be shooting? What might be the background uh, if they were trying to shoot at someone? So discussing those kind of things is very, very important. So there's some training scenarios and ideas for you to think about or talk about with your team for some training for you or a team. Remember to talk about this, but don't get so focused on the crossfire issue. This is one concept, but it's very unlikely to happen between the fact that shootings are not likely to occur at your church. And then generally only the well-trained people are going to react quickly followed by concealed weapons permit holders who will typically be quite delayed in their actions or response. So a big crossfire shootout is really unlikely to happen. But just in case, talk about it and use these scenarios we discussed in the video. Show them to your team, take them to a training at your church. And as always, I thank you so much for joining me today and taking the time to get better at protecting your people in your church. And I hope that you'll stay safe and secure until I catch up with you again on the next video.